So it's uh, another brew day. It's a fresh, bright morning. Um, it's Saturday morning, and today is the BrewTube live brew morning or brew day uh, that Richard Williams has set up. Um, I believe most people are brewing the Hokum Stomp recipe from Camera's Central Home Brewing recipe gear recipe book uh, which is very good um, however I am not going to brew that recipe because I literally have just finished a keg of it uh, so I have decided to brew let me find it left-handed giant cheeseburger cavalry although that said um, I have significantly changed the recipe um, it's supposed to be citra mosaic. Mine is still citra mosaic, but primarily uh, I've gone heavy on the mosaic. Um, so it is citra in the boil, magnum and citra in the boil, and then mosaic and whirlpool and all dry hop. Um, and I also am not using USO5. I'm going to be using Ebergarden Creek. And uh, I have also upped the amount of oats and torrified wheat so kind of pushing it a bit more into the east coast style um, whereas this is probably a little more um, hybrid maybe kind of east west coast style um, so everything's up to temp I used delay start this morning which is always nice uh, live brew day starts at 8 a.m. I think it's about 7:30 now, so water's all up to temp. I remembered to transfer the sparge water. Hold on. I read this out last night. So this is: do not forget transfer the sparge water, change the temp before mashing. That's something I keep forgetting to do. So then I finish my mashing and discover that I'm still heating to my strike temp. And then also I just did a little graph in terms of graph, a little picture uh, in terms of the different positions for the three-way valves uh, because um, you may recall from my last video that I ended up spilling about three litres of hot water all over my toes which um, if anyone's had that experience will know it's a good lesson. Um, so. I will mash in a second and uh, you'll get to see a bit of that. Okay, so we're all mashed in. Got a nice, uh, nice thick mash. Uh, it's not super thick, but a good, I would say, good consistency. Um, nice porridge consistency. So we'll leave that to rest for 20 minutes. Say hello to YouTube, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> good night, good night. Hello, 
Whee! So we're uh, nearly done on the mash. I'm just uh, in the process of mashing out. Um, the mash has gone pretty well so far. Um, hit the pH, which was really nice. Circulating nicely. Just heating through the mash out. Sparge water is up to temp. At 76 degrees, so I've mashed this beer at uh, 68 degrees to go for those um, longer chain dextrins, try and get a bigger mouthfeel and a nice body on the beer. Now onto the sparge. So I've lifted the grain basket, that all went really well. Using the new relatively low fi, very low fi uh, winch, which is working fine. Mm, that actually originally fell off the wall. I didn't have enough fastenings on it. Um, so that's gone back up with some proper fastenings. Uh, it seems to be working fine. I don't think it would cope with uh, a full size batch, but uh, that'll be a challenge for another day. So it's barging nicely. We are getting up to pre-boil volume, I think I'm due to get 34 point something litres, 34 and a half litres, um, so I'm just trying to nail this kind of sparge volumes to just get to the right amount so I don't suffer on efficiency. Uh, everything's going pretty well so far, right so um, we've sparged and checked the pre-boil gra gravity, according to the recipe I was looking for 1048 and um, We've absolutely smashed that bang on 10.48, which uh, which I'm super pleased with. It's nice to kind of hit the numbers that you're looking for. 70% uh, efficiency, it's not brilliant, but I'll accept it. Uh, it's not terrible. Uh, I'd like to try and get more out of it if I can, but the reality is I think you do suffer efficiency brewing relatively small batches in the bigger B80 Pro system, so um happy so far so yeah i've just finished the sparge i'm now on the boil i've added the first wart hop i was going to use magnum i decided to use columbus instead just to add a little bit more flavor uh do you enjoy the flavor of columbus hops so um i've used that instead of magnum so uh, it's quiz time on the live brew day with Chris Millington. <laughs> the quiz master. The, en the entire intention of this quiz, I have to say, was to see just how many boil overs I could produce. <laughs> have we had any yet? I was, I was really close to a boil over. <laughs> okay, so we're now um, only 10 minutes left of the boil. Um, circulating the chiller. Well, my torch. We'll get some. Uh, I can't even guess. Quite a lot of hops heading through that. By the looks of it, I've just added the uh, the Citra addition. Citra 10 minute edition. So the boil's complete and we're now chilling it down for the whirlpool. So we've got the whirlpool running really nicely. We're cooled down to 80 degrees. This is the uh, mosaic whirlpool edition. And it goes. Yeah. Right, moment of truth, checking the original gravity. Now on the transfer, having whirlpooled, there's still a lot of um, protein, true by the looks of things. 
uh, transferring across at 31 degrees right now which is ideal for the kvike yeast that I'll be adding so Trub Trap has done a great job catching all the troop just a case of adjusting this slightly continue to draw off the wart it's a very cloudy beer there's a lot of hops in there got the adjustable dip tube here so I can play around with that in there right that's the lot transferred and see lots of troub and hops here she is gonna drop this in and uh, get the yeast in There's my yeast starter. Brew day is done. We are <clears throat> we have beer in the FE that is uh, happily sat there. Hopefully at about 30 degrees. Let's check the temp. 29.5. So we're going to ferment this Gvike at a nice, healthy, hot temperature. That will finish out in about two or three days, um, and then I'll be adding the first dry hop. Just check the uh, original gravity, it finished at exactly 10.55. Guys, it's Saturday night and I've got a triple bill this evening. I am gonna be kegging the cheeseburger uh, cavalry and I will be tasting the grapefruit falcon and it is my local homebrew club um, Zoom meet tonight, so um, I'll be having a few beers, namely uh, Shattered Dream by Siren, Dea Saturated in cit Citra, which is their all Citra double IPA coming in at 8%. I have just cleaned the keg, uh, I'm now running through some Star San. So to also therefore clear the um, transfer tube of uh, oxygen. There's the cheeseburger cavalry. Uh, sad 10 psi, that's at 2 degrees Celsius. It has been cold crashing for two days now. Um, it fermented out in two days, 48 hours. The Kvik uh, just ripped through it and it actually took longer to dry hop. I double dry hopped it, I dry hopped it on day uh, two, I caught like maybe the last couple of points of fermentation uh, with 80 grams of mosaic and then I um, dry hopped it again at day four with 180 grams of mosaic and then gave that about day and a half and then started cold crash. Um, so we're ready to keg. So I will take my spunding valve, I will remove the, kill the pressure out, I'm going to remove the dial um, because if you get a lot of foaming um, 
it can mess up your dial and that's arguably the most expensive component of that setup. So that is now uh, ready to go. That will go on the gas in post um, and the beer will go in the on the beer outpost. So we will transfer with zero oxygen. I will have 10 psi in the keg. There'll be 10 psi in the fermenter. So we equalize the two um, uh, vessels and then I'll start to slowly open this and it will start the uh, transfer. It's quite a slow process, but um, because the beer is already somewhat carbonated, because the, the firm Zilla is also a uni tank, um, you can get some foaming. So you've got to be careful, you've got to really transfer quite slowly. Quick tip is when you do attach the spunding valve, um, I'm lucky in terms of the fact that my uh, garage door, uh, my garage floor is slightly sloped, uh, but if you were to pop something underneath here, put it a slight slant, turn it this way, and then you'll know when the keg will be full because beer will start to spurt out of here. Um, and then once it is upright again, that will be below the uh, dip tube for the CO2. So you'll never actually overfill the keg. I know some people struggle um, knowing when the keg is full. So that's just uh, my little tip for the day. Okay guys, so transfer is underway, I believe, yes. Looks like it's all going good. Uh, so I have hooked up the Firmzilla from here. The, what we can't see, it's quite a lot of condensation, but you can see the dip dip tube just there. That's a floating ball, um, floating dip tube. So that's running out of there, down there, into the beer out. So effectively it goes all the way down the pickup tube to the bottom. And I will start opening that slightly and the transfer is away so um, right now I'm just uh, having a quick black IPA this was the um, elusive brewing shadow of a beast Clone, uh, which I found the recipe for on their website. In fact, um, I think Andy Parker posted that and Spellbinder maybe um, fairly early on in the lockdown uh, just to share the recipes. And I've had this beer before at a craft beer festival um, and it was an absolute banger. So I decided to make it and I'm, I'm not been disappointed. It's been a uh, Absolutely super beer. It's just that perfect balance between hoppiness and a little bit of roast. And it's actually only coming in at like 4.3% or something like that, um, which actually the, the original is slightly stronger. Um, I missed some numbers, so it came in a little, a little lower, but the body's fantastic on it, so we've got no complaints. Hello ladies and gents, it's uh, tasting time. Got the cheeseburger caval cavalry, cavalry. I've only had one so far and I can't get my words out. There she is. <clears throat> so, excuse the mess in the background. Um, I have been relaying floor in my house today. I am brewing as we speak, so I'm just completing the mash on a English uh, bitter. The live Zoom brew day was absolutely fantastic fun. Really, really enjoyed myself. It was really good fun just being able to interact with other people and, you know, uh, hats off to Chris uh, Millington, even though he wasn't brewing because of the weather. You know, he turned up, he was there most of the day, he, he did a quiz, so uh, hats off to you, Chris. Uh, thanks for that, it was a lot of fun. Um, no ball overs, though, sadly. Uh, during the quiz so I mean the, the the zoom was running for I believe it started at 7.30 ish in the morning that's when I joined and I'm fairly certain it ran till 10pm 
So that's a pretty epic effort um, on the Zoom um, front. And uh, I dropped in kind of later on in the afternoon and into the evening and I had a beer uh, with some of you guys in the evening. So that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the next one and I am actually going to brew the beer that was selected which is the Beast of a Midlands Mild so uh, sounds a bit of a weird recipe vanilla mild but I'm going to give it a go and um, should be good fun I'm looking forward to that okay so it's uh, sometime later you'll notice I have suddenly moved um, the battery ran out my camera and I also had to sort out my brew here she is the cheeseburger cavalry which uh, you may recall me saying I adapted the style very slightly or the recipe uh, added more oats primarily and changed the uh, the hops uh, the recommended hops so it's primarily mosaic. Um, so we've got a nice uh, cloudy, not super cloudy, just a, a, a cloudy uh, beer. It's not way over into a turbid New England IPA kind of level, but it's it's still in that category. Um, quite a nice tight head, very small bubbles. It seems to stick around, it's not massive. In fairness, this is still carving up. So the colour's really nice. It's a kind of coppery orange. I seem to be making an awful lot of beers pretty much the same colour as this. It looks almost exactly like the grapefruit uh, um, falcon that I made uh, very recently. So, get on with the aroma. It's a pretty full on aroma. There was 100 grams in the Whirlpool, 80 grams in the first dry hop and 180 grams in the second dry hop. So that is 260 grams dry hop. And you can smell it when you pour it. There's classic dankness to it. Almost smells like candied orange jolly rancher type things oh cheers guys i think what you notice immediately is that it's got bitterness so it's not it's not a true kind of new england ipa there's definitely some more bitterness with the hot side additions, the citra that I added in the Columbus. I'm not sure if I'm really picking up the Columbus. It was quite a small addition. It's probably just playing a little supporting role in the back there. Uh, the citra, I'm guessing, would have added some flavour profile, but primarily just bitterness. But it's a super fruity, lovely... Yeah. It's not it's not super tropical. I'm having a hard time distinguishing exactly what kind of flavours are in there. There's something in there that it's kinda of, there's definitely not like orange. But like maybe guava yeah I'm not sure um, doesn't appear to be any off flavours in the beer the the body is I would say medium to heavy not quite what I expected I was kind of maybe expecting something that was going to be a bit bigger this is probably just more drinkable, it's just sort of more in the middle in terms of just being a bit more IPA-ish, a little bit more pale ale kind of, it's not 
it's 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 really tasty. It's drinkable. It's um, um, not particularly standout. It's just a good all round. I would say hazy kind of pale ale. It's it's very pleasant. Mmm. It's very drinkable. Yeah. I'm happy with that. I will be drinking many more of those. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So I'd just like to say um, a hello to all of my new subscribers. So there's been a number of people that have joined uh, and subscribed to my channel. Um, a big shout out to uh, Rusty, Russell McGowan for um, the plug on the BrewTube um, official Facebook page. Um, and I have actually uh, in the past few days seen a, a massive uptick in terms of my uh, subscriber numbers so I am heading to towards and aiming for that 200 mark um, I will be running a 200 subscriber competition there will be a very special prize uh, for uh, the winner uh, I'll probably pick uh, one two or three winners um, I expect to see another video uh, from me on that uh, but otherwise uh, I hope you enjoyed the video um, I'll link the recipe below um, don't forget to like the video that is always really helpful and if you aren't a subscriber already please hit the subscribe button and um, I will speak to you all again very soon cheers guys <laughs>